Hi to everybody. It's welcome back again. It's three o'clock, and we start this first or second afternoon session, which is focusing on dialogue with members. We will um, present you some of the activities we have done, what we have obtained, and we will discuss with you about what we can do better or differently. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, there are uh, six items uh, to be presented today. Uh, you, you can read there on, on a screen, so there is no need to, to repeat them. Uh, each one of them will be presented by uh, either people from the office or a person from the executive board. And on some of these, we will have some polls to ask you um, your opinion and uh, future direction. So, uh, without further ado, I give the floor to Svetlana Tikhonenko from our office to present the new data uh, featured in our higher education data portal. Svetlana, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Enrica. So, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Svetlana. As you might see, I'm working in the Informatics Euro uh, Europe office as a program associate in data and analysis. And now I will quickly present you the new data that we added to the high education data portal this year. So as you might remember, uh, last year we made a big step and launched the Informatics Higher Education Data Portal, which uh, presents the fundamental data about informatics higher education in Europe. And I will ask my colleagues, uh, I think you, uh, to paste uh, a link to this portal into Zoom chat. And now I will uh, share my screen so that you can uh, see uh, how the portal looks like and what uh, important changes we made this year. So I shared my screen, hope you can see it. Um, that's uh, the main page of the data portal. The most important menu is uh, statistics. Um, here you can find the uh, number of students enrolled in first year in all semesters, degrees awarded at bachelor, master and PhD level. We present the data for research universities and universities of applied sciences. And this year uh, we added the data for 2018-19 and currently our portal covers nine years. Uh, another big improvement we made this year, we included two uh, large new countries that we were missing so far. It's France uh, and Turkey, and I would like to thank our colleagues uh, from these countries who helped us to find the right data and to interpret it. And just a reminder, you can further click uh, and add some other countries, either from the table or from the map. You can uh, exclude some years, include them afterwards, and you will see some nice infographics on the right part of the screen. Um, just uh, a short reminder, please always pay attention to the bottom part of the screen where we show the footnotes. They are quite uh, important because uh, they show and explain which data is given. You know that each country has its own peculiarities and here we explain uh, what are the difference, uh, what important changes have been across here. So please pay attention to them before drawing any conclusions when you compare the data. Now I'm back to the main page of the uh, data portal. By the way, this year we added the navigation menu which can help you to easily navigate between different uh, sections of the data portal. So the three new menus are uh, higher. Uh, the first one is higher education systems. Here you can learn more about different peculiarities of higher education systems uh, in each country. And currently we cover 23 countries uh, across Europe. Uh, the next uh, menu is academic positions and titles, where we show a comparative analysis of some key academic positions, PhD and postdoc and professor. So let's click first on PhD and postdoc, and here you will see uh, the job titles in national languages for PhD candidate and postdoctoral researchers. And when you click on a country name, you can 
learn more details uh, how these positions are organized uh, and so on. So uh, the same principle is for academic positions and titles at a uh, professor level. Here we follow the nomenclature of uh, assistant, associate and full professor, but of course in some countries there is no direct correspondence with this nomenclature, but again, Whenever you click uh, on a country name, you can learn more about um, these academic positions. And now I'd like to show the last but not the least uh, menu, which shows probably the most interesting and controversial information. It's uh, about academic salaries. And here we report estimated salaries for PhD and postdoc and for professors. Let's again click first on PhD and postdoc. And here you will see the table with estimations of minimum and maximum yearly salaries in Euro. We report gross salaries and we really want to draw your attention that the salaries comparison is only meaningful when you read uh, the country specific notes that can be found below the table. So please read them carefully. Um, and the same uh, principle is for academic salaries of professors at various ranks. Again, here reading the explanation below the table is really important because we cannot consider all taxation or pension or social fair differences across countries. Uh, in addition, they might be different uh, bonuses, special allowances or project grants paid to academics. Uh, which uh, can make actual uh, salaries earned by professors even higher. So again, in short, when looking at salary comparison, please always check the country notes below the table. So that's uh, the main improvements. And I would like just to uh, tell you once again that members of Informatics Europe have a special benefit. They can download the data the statistics that we are reporting. Um, you can click just here, download data, and you can learn how to do that. If you have any questions or issues, please always feel free to contact me. So that's mainly it. And I would like just again to um, stress your attention that uh, this portal is really unique in its focus on informatics, higher education in Europe. We pay a lot of attention to careful analysis and screening of the raw data. We are consulting with the academics from informatics field in different countries. So this is very reliable and valuable source of information and we invite all interested people to use it. And again, if you have uh, any questions or need uh, more information, please always feel free to contact me. So thank you for your attention. I will stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Vitalana. And uh, I would like uh, the office to show the poll. The poll. Yeah. Uh, while I remember to our members that this is one service offered by us and it requires a membership fee. So please help us in increasing membership in Informatics Europe. Now, please uh, focus on the, it's only one question, I guess. Yeah, it's one question, but um, we would like if people have ideas or recommendations of what kind of data or which kind of analysis, if it's not listed, that people can write in the chat what they think, that then we can save this information for later. So we leave you some time to reflect on the on the question and maybe provide us with suggestion, uh, which is important because we, we would like to do what you find helpful. So if you don't if you don't tell us what can be helpful to you, we we cannot help you. So don't be shy, don't be like students in a class. And Right, right suggestion and yeah. 
And also it is important that you show this service to colleagues of other departments that are not members. This is a, an effort that we started, I think, seven years ago or eight years ago, and every year became more and more. Um, There's one question, Ahiko. Someone, uh, Simona raised a hand. Yeah, Simona. Yes, ah. hello everyone. Uh, yeah. I also uh, put uh, the idea in the chat. Um, considering also the cost actions that we started last week, I was uh, wondering if we can collect any kind of data regarding the academic stuff, right? So maybe it will, because we've done it on the students, maybe it will be interesting to see how many people do we have in the academic stuff, uh, teaching or maybe also research. And of course, if we do that, maybe it will also be interesting to see which is uh, uh, the percentage of women uh, compared yeah. to the overall. Okay, so thanks, Simona. So I think we can stop now because yes. they have the yes. numbers yeah. are fixed. Yes, yes. Okay, so thanks. Uh, thanks to everybody. And now we go to the second item uh, in this session, which is the um, Gregor Engels to present academic leadership offer. And uh, Gregor, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm Gregor Engels. I'm uh, also a member of the executive board. And um, I now present today kind of new service uh, we are offering to all members and even also to non-members of Informatics Europe. Uh, the last two years we started um, that we on the Monday workshop, the Dean's workshop, we also uh, went in the direction that we offered uh, some courses on uh, personal development, career development and uh, or, or academic leadership um, approaches and we got quite positive feedback. Um, so now we decided uh, within Informatics Europe to offer kind of courses, webinars uh, on this topic. And uh, we started this year, please next slide, uh, first with a kind of webinar. And uh, I have to say, unfortunately, also due to Corona, we couldn't do as much as we wanted to do. Uh, of course, the idea was to have uh, those face-to-face -face, uh, seminars, but uh, we had to move everything to the web, to the online version. But we didn't um, stop with this, so we continued. And uh, so we started with a kind of kickoff uh, webinar in June already on uh, the new academic normal. And as you can see here, later on you can see also the slides. Uh, this was uh, facilitated by our colleague, uh, Geraldine Fitzpatrick and uh, also by Austin Reiner. Most of you know Geraldine Fitzpatrick because she was doing this workshop the last two years. She's from Vienna and Austin Reiner is from Queen's University in Belfast. In this um, uh, webinar, we also had a seating talk by uh, Matthias Baal from the University of Lincoln, the UK, about academia beyond COVID-19, because everything now is influenced uh, by this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. And so we have to understand what will be the, um, the, our future life uh, in this situation as a researcher. Um, one outcome of this was, I already announced this yesterday, or made an uh, advertisement for this, we have a new uh, working group as Diplomatics Europe, you can see at the, at the bottom, on this impact of COVID-19 on diplomatics research, education, and academic life in general. And if you're interested, please uh, tell us, uh, tell me or the office uh, that you would like to um, be a member of this working group, because we all have to work and to understand what is the future, what is the new academic normal for us. So this was a webinar, there was a kickoff in June, but uh, a bigger service now is what we can see in the next slide, is an online course now where we have um, several sessions, six online sessions, uh, and it already started in September, and um, people are quite, into, uh, quite enthusiastic uh, who are following these. These are academic leaders, uh, starting with postdoc uh, and uh, also young professors, and um, so also here the idea is to understand um, what is more the uh, personal situation if you are becoming an academic leader in informatics or computing. And here some contents are here uh, mentioned like um, that for instance, you have to evaluate your own strength as an academic leader. You have to understand uh, what are your uh, good things um, that you can improve. And um, of course you also get um, information about techniques uh, to be better in this uh, situation to reflect on you and uh, your experience and also develop a plan for uh, growing 
as an academic leader. Again, this is facilitated uh, by Geraldine uh, Fitzpatrick and uh, also Rainer. And um, of course, our plan is to continue with this, um, maybe with the same topic or with other topics um, we'll see later in, in the poll. So what you can see here is that um, the data portal, of course, what was presented by Svetlana is uh, uh, really, really uh, an important um, service we're offering, but would like to offer more. And um, so this is, was uh, now a trial this year that we started with this, unfortunately, a bit hindered by the online situation. But um, this is uh, the strength of Informatics Europe that we uh, offer really services to you and uh, to your colleagues uh, in, in your departments. And, um, and it is uh, now also here done by, by people from informatics. Uh, Geraldine and Austin are computer scientists or uh, people from informatics. And they offer these services uh, with this additional background, how to, 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 to think about how to develop uh, things um, to informaticians, to, to, other, to other people in informatics. So from informatics to informatics. This is an important service we have. If you would like to continue with this, and here we have again a small poll on the next um, slide, and please um, indicate what you would like to do. Um, and uh, you can see here for questions or for uh, alternatives, um, what is the thing that should be the most focused on uh, career developments for PhDs? Is this is what we should um, offer more, um, or the career of emerging leaders? Um, I think this is really also an important area where people uh, start to rebuild up a group in this, uh, maybe even this difficult, difficult situation of uh, Corona. Um, but maybe also then uh, in, uh, when you become a leader, then you will first become leader of your own research group. Later, maybe you become a, a leader of a department. And this is uh, also, also always an important topic here in our uh, view of activities uh, to uh, support deans and department leaders. Um, or maybe there should be something more about diversity. Please uh, indicate your choices here in this poll. And then I was brief, I was short. I think we can continue. Of course, if you have questions, uh, we have a few minutes left. You can ask me. Yeah, you can okay. make questions yeah, because uh, we are, there are still people answering the, the questions. We need to leave it open a little bit. Yes. Um. You can okay. check in the chat if there are questions. Mm -hmm. There is a remark from Linda. Uh, okay, Linda says uh, a large number of graduate courses for PhD students. Of course, this is really also what we can see in Germany. It's increasing that people understand. Uh, we do not have only have to teach, uh, let's say, that they have to do research, but uh, they are becoming uh, uh, leaders of the future, the, the PhD students or the postdocs. But we also have to train them. And um, that's true that at different places now people understand this and offer this. And, um, but we also offer this now at Informatics Europe, I think, for a good, um, good of high quality uh, with these people. And uh, you always have to choose which service you, um, you, you use. But I think uh, what we are offering here is really high quality and is very interesting for all people who are working in informatics. Is there any further question? Or, uh, of course, if you have other um, idea for courses that are not among the options in the poll, please write to, to, to us, to Greg, or to me, to the administration, to the office. I mean, it's, uh, we are always open to suggestions from members. Mm -hmm. We are also open to people who would like to offer something. Uh, now at the moment uh, we have Geraldine and uh, Austin, but if you are also doing something in that direction and you would like to offer this via Informatics Europe, also interesting for us and please contact us. Okay, I think, okay. I think we can end with Lana because yeah. there's no more voting. So. Okay, so let's end the poll and let's go to the next item in this afternoon session which is uh, an activity that uh, we, we tried during this year to give more regularity to produce a policy statement and to provide feedback uh, to institutions. Um, so 
Okay, so the, in the, the, the most important things we have been doing during this year were these uh, listed here of different nature. The first one was uh, something that we decided to do on our own in uh, February or March when the COVID exploded. And uh, it was a, actually a, a more a general statement in the use of IT for COVID, but also applies to the general use of IT for public health. And uh, the second one was uh, uh, the outcome of a workshop and the work that we did after the workshop with national associations. We are really happy about this uh, joint statement on informatics research evaluation. And you can see all of these statements in the link that uh, Vineke has put in, in, in the chat below. So please have, have a look and see what we have uh, stated in public as um, a community position on this. Uh, on these uh, items, on, the, on this topic. And we look forward to continue working with uh, the National Association to do more on informatic research evaluation. There are a lot of uh, differences among the various counties, but we think that something common can be said for, for uh, the entire Europe. And as, as I always uh, repeat, uh, uh, joining forces helps everybody to be, to be stronger and uh, makes our voice uh, uh, louder. The, the third and the fourth item are instead the feedback that we provided to the European Union uh, to open consultation that uh, I, I say uh, rather often they, they, they launch to, to the public to see what, what is the opinion of the community at large on uh, some issue. And this, this year we have chosen a couple of them, artificial intelligence and, uh, and data, the, the, the two uh, probably hottest topic uh, in our field that everybody understood our importance, even uh, journalists and politicians. So, but maybe they do not understand exactly why, but they, they feel the importance. So we, 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 we provided our position on, this, uh, on uh, these two papers. Uh, and uh, it's difficult to say uh, how, how far this uh, will go because, I mean, they have uh, a lot of feedback, but uh, you may remember from yesterday morning session that we also participated in the public consultation on uh, education, on digital education. In that case, we, we were able to do, to affect in a significant way. And uh, so we, we, we think this is, uh, this is important. And final one was uh, the feedback uh, on a draft of effort on computing curricula, which is an effort that uh, was started by ACM, IEEE, and uh, other organizations to try to um, systematize the way computing is taught all, 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 all over the world. We provided uh, our feedback, our uh, European viewpoint uh, that, I mean, it, it was interesting because uh, there were some differences in the way we see com computing or informatics in Europe and the way it is seen in, in other parts of the world. And uh, this issue of curricula is also important because I, I think that I think that we could do something more European in, in this area. And this connects with the, the, the question we are going to, to pose you in, in the poll, uh, because uh, I mean, producing this document means to be uh, known to the general public and means to speak uh, with your voice, with the voice of the European community uh, loudly. And we think it is important, but maybe we are wrong or maybe we are choosing uh, not the proper argument. Uh, so I would like therefore to show the poll. We ask you uh, your, uh, your, uh, your feedback. So first of all, uh, how important do you think uh, that it is for our community to, to answer to this question? Because this is not something that happens for free. I mean, first of all, uh, somebody, which is in many cases is the president, that is me, has to look to, to what's happening and decide on where, where to say something or not. And then you have to set up a, a working uh, group or a committee. And, uh, and this is, requires uh, to spend uh, some effort. And this effort uh, which is spent on this is not spent on other things. So how much do you think it is important to provide this uh, this uh, common view of the informatics uh, of the informatics community on uh, this kind of issue. And the second one, the second question is uh, about uh, contributing, because as I said, uh, um, what happened in, in the items that uh, you, you have seen before, it happened 
through the um, participation of mainly board members. But clearly, since board members are a limited number and much less than, than, than uh, the members of Informatics Europe and the member uh, at large of the community, we could do more if we have more people uh, involved. Uh, in all cases, it was not a huge amount of work. I mean, it, it was one, two, max three pages. But it is clearly something that when the need arises, you have to do very quickly. It's not something that you can work on for six or 12 months. So if you are interested in contributing to this, please uh, say and add your name. <laughs> Otherwise, we don't have the, the, the people to do this thing. And if you are not available, lucky, you can, you can just answer no or not answer at all. And um, OK. Um, I don't know how the, the, the answers are coming. Is people still answering? Yeah, I'm not thinking it's a bit. Yeah. We are moving to the end, I think. So. Yeah, okay. So. Okay, I don't see new, new. Yeah, I think we can close this at Lana. Okay, so we are done with this. Do you want to see the results? Just, I mean, we could just quickly. Share the results. I think this is makes sense. Yes. Huh? Yes. Can I share this with Anna just quickly? Yeah. No. Okay. So yeah, we see we, that we, uh, we, most we, people we, think it's important. Yes, and uh, but very now, now, yeah. Ha, ha. So uh, okay. So we are, and then thirty six uh, said yes, which is one third more or less which uh, we are 45 so there should be 15 names here in the chat but I, I, no I, I, because I, just uh, not everyone answered so there was ah, okay, eight okay. people said that uh, they would like to help yeah. okay, and uh, yeah. eight maybe so okay, 16 okay. people among between okay. the two so. but i mean uh, uh, um, maybe you since you are you are here you are the representative you are deans so you are busy uh, but maybe other uh, people in your uh, group uh, are a bit less busy than you are or a bit more interested in this kind of work. So please spread the, the, the voice about this activity. It is really, really important that we are able to produce this statement. This provides, uh, these are helpful for our community, provides feedback to the policymaker and makes our association uh, more and more visible. Okay. okay, good. So I think we can go to the next item, which is going to be short. I mean, you, you may have uh, heard about uh, the digital humanism, which is an initiative that uh, we are supporting as Informatics Europe, uh, which is focusing on, uh, on uh, a, a different approach to the digital transformation that takes uh, into account uh, human beings since the first uh, step you do in any transformation process. We, um, it was initiated by Annes Wertner, um, a member of uh, our, our board from TU Bien. Last year, uh, we had uh, a, a very interesting workshop in, uh, in Bien. And uh, this year we'll do it again, but virtually as almost everything due to the situation you know. And uh, we have also a manifesto which states the, the, the importance of considering uh, um, our discipline no more as a, a pure scientific and technical discipline, but as a, I mean, a discipline that has to do with social aspects, uh, the, 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 the people and the, 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 the social relations. And uh, I, I tend to say that we should train and consider our discipline a bit like medicine that have uh, we uh, doctors have their roots in uh, in science. They study biology, physics, chemistry, but then they uh, have to, to 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 cure people. I mean, they have to uh, understand what people have, the illness, and uh, make them feel better and uh, keep society healthy. And I think uh, in the digital world, uh, informatics is the equivalent of medicine, and we have to do this kind of. Uh, of work and we can't uh, do this if we don't have uh, 
if you don't assume a different attitude. So um, in, in, in the chat, you see the, 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 the link to the Digital Humanism uh, website. Please go there and stay in touch. There is a regular series of, uh, of seminar, uh, which are recorded and uh, there is a YouTube channel. And uh, so follow it and uh, start thinking about uh, this different perspective of, on, uh, on informatics. Um, that's, that's it for, for this issue. And I think, unless there is some question. Okay. I, I I'm, don't see any question, but if, if you have I any, mean, just please write to me or to Annes or I mean, you, you will find a way of knowing more. Okay. So we can go to the next item, which I think is again uh, um, Gregor's time yes. to, to speak. Uh, so, Gregor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, well, I will continue. Unless, <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> no joke, no joke, go on. Okay, I will continue. So um, I think what is very important for us at the, the informatics uh, your board and our executive board that we have a dialogue in both directions, that we uh, uh, listen to you and we, we hear something from you. Uh, what are your um, expectations? What are your requests? Uh, what do you expect from uh, paying uh, um, your fee uh, to Informatics Europe uh, to attend the ECSS uh, conference and so on? So, and uh, last year, I think we started a very nice idea with this creative coffee break. This was a coffee break, maybe you remember, where we had different um, boards um, with people from the um, so whiteboards with people from the board and uh, they were speaking to you uh, about different topics and uh, so today I give a short report what happened with your ideas and uh, suggestions. Um, so there was one um, board uh, and I will speak more about this later by Kim Menz about the, the PG student support we had one by Erika Abraham and Leticia Yakeri about women in informatics research and education. Some was about uh, new ideas uh, by Enrico and me. And there uh, also was one about uh, China relations with the uh, European Union. And uh, although at that time it was uh, yeah, obvious that we should do more also in this international perspective and not only to the west, but also to the east, to the far east. And uh, Linda was very interested in this. And um, so then uh, we, uh, as you know, due to Corona, everything is here postponed. We tried to send Linda to China in March, but she refused to go there. And uh, maybe you can understand that this is at the moment a little bit postponed. But uh, of course, it is still on our agenda and we will uh, speak about this uh, hopefully next year or in the coming years. And Linda is still uh, busy with this. Another one was about the leadership topic. Um, and uh, you know that yesterday there was again a leaders workshop um, again uh, led by Medi Yazayeri and Cassia um, and Harald Gall. But uh, the, at this uh, board, there was Susan Eisenbach at that time at the board, and they um, got uh, yeah, positive feedback that we should continue with the leaders workshop. And, um, and also, um, what we do in this uh, perspective that we uh, export, uh, reported the academic leadership uh, offer. Now, I go to the first three items here in a little bit more detail, and I tell you what we um, uh, did there. So here you can see Kim, uh, Kim Menz, a uh, very active member of our board, and uh, he was uh, standing in front of this board for the PhD support. And um, so some of your ideas were that we should improve the uh, interrelation between industry and academia uh, for internships and uh, maybe even joint PhD and so on. So maybe you all know, if you look into our internal organization, we have so-called high-level activities, and each board member is responsible for such a high level activity is a focus area we do in our um, yeah, work at the board. And so we uh, defined a new one uh, on uh, strengthening the relations with industry. And um, Dick Wulderman is uh, responsible here and he um, worked on a yeah, work plan and he started uh, first conversations with industry um, on this topic. So this work is also going on, of course, also hindered by Corona, but we are busy here. Then there was an idea to improve the exchange at the European level, um, to become even more uh, involved in the European level. And you know that we are always looking for new members and we are busy with this, we are successful, you see later. We have now a cost action 
um, is working now. Um, and um, of course, as we see, we have the academic leadership program again. And uh, so we are yeah, offering more and more and work on the European level. And uh, the idea was to do more uh, with the, collect the data collection. And also you has all seen the report by uh, Svetlana that uh, we have now also the PhD students numbers and salaries in the data portal. And we will still continue um, with this and uh, we will uh, extend uh, the data we are collecting and um, then uh, showing to you. Next slide, uh, then there was another table on uh, women in informatics research and education. You know that this is always uh, an important topic at Informatics Europe. We have the, the WIRE group and the WIRE workshop. And here on this slide, you see Letizia in front of this uh, board. And next uh, to the left, you see also Geraldine. Uh, he was also there last year. And um, as already said, um, yeah, and uh, we have now the running coast action on the European Network for Gender Balance Informatics. Um, uh, Letizia and Christina Pereira are heavily involved here, but also we have a new member in the, in the office, is Wienicke, and Wienicke is also supporting this uh, activity here heavily. And uh, then diversity education. Um, yeah, as I said, this is an important topic, diversity, and we will have special workshops again tomorrow afternoon, a wire workshop and why and how to improve gender balance at all stages of the career path in automatics. You have seen that we have this Minerva Award uh, also supporting the diversity issue. So we also took here your advice, your, um, um, your, your, um, your, um, uh, your ideas uh, that we should do more in that area and we continued, of course, with the wire. The next slide uh, shows, um, then, uh, not all, there were many, many ideas you had, uh, new ideas. Um, I collected here only three. Uh, but without, if you haven't forgotten the other ones you mentioned. But um, so there was a special request uh, that we should inform our members in a better way. And um, so here is another person in the office, this is Franziska Hauke. She is uh, responsible for communication. And she did a lot uh, the last year on um, having a very active Twitter account, uh, having a huge LinkedIn group, um, and also to increase the uh, frequency of, of our members' bulletin. Uh, this comes now every um, uh, second uh, month. But again, here, I have to say, we need your support. Uh, so when uh, Francisca is sending uh, you or your department uh, a request, uh, do you have anything to report on your department? Then, of course, uh, we would be really happy to get this information and to put it to the uh, bulletin so that it can be then uh, also sent to all other members of uh, Informatics Europe. So as I said, it has always to be a two-way communication. And so you are, um, by having paid a fee for Informatics Europe, um, this is uh, only the first step. Uh, stay, um, yeah, stay active uh, in our uh, uh, yeah, dual communication in both directions. Another idea was uh, to do even more with the national associations. And uh, we took this also very serious. And again, we have here a workshop tomorrow morning on interdisciplinarity and informatics. Um, where the national associations are invited and coming with um, representatives, um, not coming really, but online coming. And uh, But we had um, a face-to-face -face meeting on open access, open data, and research data management. Uh, in January, that was at the time possible. So um, there, I don't know how many, but there was quite a number of um, national associations representatives uh, speaking to each other. So this means we don't offer a uh, service for you as an individual, but we're also offering a service to the national organizations. We are quite a, like a platform for them. And, uh, and there were people who have met for the first time uh, in this way uh, between different national associations. So they all said it was really helpful to exchange um, the um, ideas and to change what they're doing. Um, yeah. And um, you have seen also, um, that informatics for all is growing and is uh, working uh, on uh, the um, that informatics uh, comes a topic at all schools. So there is this curriculum framework uh, now started at informatics for all. So we are here also um, supporting and busy with the new curriculum development in the area of informatics. So altogether, you see that um, we take of always serious what you are telling us, and uh, we try to. Um, um, yes, to start and the appropriate initiatives. Um, but you should also not forget, and I have to say this here once, that uh, all members in the board and, the, and also in the executive board are volunteers. They are all doing this work voluntary for the community. And 
as you may understand that also our capacity is limited. So we need all of you uh, to support us. Uh, and uh, I think then we all together become a very, very successful organization. So with this, okay. uh, we don't have a poll here, um, but uh, of course, if you have any, any uh, further idea, suggestion what we should could do, and it's even better if you say, I think it's good to do this and I'm also willing to contribute and to help, then uh, please uh, tell us uh, and uh, maybe we also have now uh, one or two minutes uh, for, for such uh, ideas or questions because we have one more slide only left. Yeah. So I open the, the mic up to you. Uh, if you would like to say something, you ask something, then I listen. Yeah. There was already, uh, already the, uh, I see here by, by Linda, he also, Linda also uh, asked for uh, yeah, other people who are interested in uh, joining her work. Um, so please uh, speak to Linda, speak to us. Um, and um, yeah, so that we need all, we need, we, we have to work together. Otherwise, um, we are not that successful as it could be. Enrico, I give the word to you. Yeah, yes. Oh. Thanks, Gregor. Thanks for your presentation. And I uh, stress again the records from, from Gregor. The association is what you make of it. I mean, so if you don't work, if you don't cooperate with us, we cannot do more. So it is important that you try to think what you can do and try to speak about this with your colleagues. I mean, the people that are not yet members, try to convince them to become members, speak to your other colleagues in the department and try to convince them to give a little of their time to, to, to the association. All, all together we can be stronger. And now uh, I think uh, we are coming to an end. I will give the floor to Javier Soriano from Universidad Politecnica de Madrid and also President of CODI, the Spanish Council of the I think First, we announced right in Hico that the CSS is going to be in Madrid. Yeah. Yeah. And after we can pass. Uh, so I think, yeah, so we the announcement is that uh, yeah. we really hope that it's going to be in Madrid in uh, 2021. And then, yeah, so Javier can say something. Hello, hello, everybody. So I, I just want to say a few words. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to I want to congratulate Informatics Europe for providing such an interesting virtual space uh, for knowledge exchange and networking. I have to say that, that the conference has been organized at a very high level this year, despite of the difficult of the difficult time of the pandemic. So congratulations. Uh, next year, ECSS hopefully will be hosted by UPM and co-organized by by Cody. Uh, I will, it will be our pleasure and a great honor uh, for us at SIMP, UPM and, and CODI to, to host ECSS 2021 in Madrid. And let me say just a few words about the, these institutions uh, in less than, than, than two minutes. Uh, Universidad Politecnica de, Madrid, Politecnica de Madrid, UPM, is the, is the oldest and, and largest uh, Spanish technical university with more than uh, 4,000 faculty members around around. 38,000 undergraduate students and 6,000 postgraduates in 21 schools of, of study. And the OPM School of Computer Science, Escuela Técnica Superior de Ingenieros Informáticos in Spanish, is a, is a pioneering school in, in university level informatics in Spain and has been spearheading uh, Spanish progress in the, in the field since 1977. Um, our community has 170 faculty members, around 2,100 uh, undergraduate students and 300 postgraduates. Uh, CODI is, is, as you know, the, the Spanish Council of Deans of Informatics. And this national association consists of 67 faculties and schools of informatics from 58 different universities in Spain. It's very big. Uh, CODI became a member of Informatics Europe back in 2016 and the fact that CODI co-organized the event uh, will facilitate, in my opinion, uh, more leaders and decision makers in informatic education to attend the conference, uh, strengthening the importance of, of building a, a strong European community in informatics, which is one of the core objectives of, of Informatics Europe. Uh, to facilitate this, I am trying to organize the annual meeting, meeting of, of the CODI General Assembly involving 67 deans 
in Madrid and on the same dates as ECSS 2021. I hope this, this will represent a, a great opportunity to increase the presence of Spanish universities in, in Informatics Europe. Uh, we will do our best to organize a memorable uh, ECSS in, in Madrid, as was the, the, the 2012 edition in Barcelona, hosted by our colleagues, uh, Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. And in case ECSS could finally return to a physical on location conference next year, the safety and the well-being of all conference participants will be our priority. So till next year, till, till next year please stay safe and healthy. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Javier, and thanks also for having accepted to organize the, the, the event. And we, we, we really, we really hope that we will be back to physical uh, meetings uh, very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I think we now can close this session and uh, switch uh, to the General Assembly uh, of the Association.